On behalf of the VFW Mayflower Post, I want to welcome you to the Plymouth Fall Festival. We've got Please, a great do you see your father anywhere? He's probably in the back with Annie. Now I'd like to introduce our MC for this now afternoon. Now just remember, girls, okay? Keep a pleasure. smile on your face. Come on, smile. <laughs> And look out at the audience and the judges like they were your friends, okay? And please, don't trip. <laughs> the one and only, Roger Clemens! Uh, you remember what he said? Keep smiling. Yes. Keep smiling. And no matter what happens, remember, you're still my favorite beauty. Right? Oh, Daddy, please. Michigan Bay, huh? Okay, let's get on with it. Our first contestant, here we are with the windows on the world, hey. representing Clark's Screen and Glass, Miss Lisa Robinson. Jess, I don't have much time. I've got to get out front. My daughter, you know, she's in that shindig. Okay, we'll start with the angle. And now we have our second contestant, Miss Kim Tuttle. the prettiest ribbon in a hair I've ever seen. Hmm. He's been spending a lot of time up in Lansing. He's got a good string up there and he's been pulling on it all winter. Yeah, who is it? I think it's the Secretary of State. Is that confirmed? It's a good guess. Just a guess. No guesses now. It'll help, but we can't use guesses. You know that. What else do you have? Miss Harvard Electric, April Richardson. <laughs> Angleman's going to be asking for the whole contract. That means the highway, the park offshoot, all the prep work wait, on the bayfront. Wait, wait. You... He's going to pull it off. It'll have to go out for bids. That'll be the legal way, not Angleman's way. The state's going to ask for a big completion guarantee, real big, all with a short deadline. The way money's tied around here, contracts will be in a fix. Only Angleman's getting his cash set now. Get the picture? Because he knows the whole setup. That's incredible. It's the truth. Crooked, illegal, but... Ah, blow him out of the water. Mike, please, go easy on that time he spent up in Lansing. He laid that on me himself. He'll be able to trace it to me. Understand? It's my neck. Don't you worry about a thing, Jess. Just keep me posted. Anything you need. And now, from the people who keep us both hot and cold, representing Miss Hardwick Appliance, Robin Dansby. <laughs> Is she very nervous? Oh, and now for our next contestant, from the paper with the heart, Miss Daily Tribune and daughter of one of our leading citizens, Annie McNeil. Sources close to the issue speak of Angleman's ties with elected state officials responsible for giving outstanding con... No, wait a minute. Let's change that. Responsible for awarding outstanding contracts, officials sworn to manage state affairs by the letter of the law. Angleman, who had admitted to spending large sums of money on behalf of incumbent legislators... Well, you got the facts. Our own edition, September 1978, refused to comment on his close ties and was silent when asked about his involvement in pending state highway development. This is sink angle. Good. We should rest in the bottom with all the other crooks. Uh, sorry, Mike. Uh, excuse me, Gordon. I have here with me uh, Mr. and Mrs. Hall. Brady Hall. Gordon A.G. Our managing editor. Nice to meet you. Mike McNeil, our chief reporter. Uh, sit down, please. Thank you. What's up, Bonnell? The Halls are looking for their daughter, whom they've traced to the Plymouth area. A oh, runaway. Yes, she's, she's only 15. She'll be 16 in December. Yeah, well, you can't keep the kids away from the beach in the summertime. Here's a picture of the kid. Cindy. Uh, Cynthia Hall. H-U-L-L. -L. I told the Halls that uh, we'd run the photo with a headline, something like, uh, please call home, and a uh, caption with the girl's name, and that 
Your mom and dad are worried. That's okay with you. Oh, sure thing. I'll run it in the morning, first edition. We were hoping that you'd have some way of helping us find her. All we can do is run the picture. We'll let you know if anything comes in. Uh, thank you. We understand. Uh, there are numbers on the back of the photo. Uh, you're from Detroit, eh? I can hear it. Yes. yes sir. Did you talk to the police? Yes, we did. They said there's nothing they can do. The police told us there's a girl in the morgue with no ID. With braces. Cindy wears braces. We went down there and we looked at her. Thank God it wasn't Cindy. It's just terrible, you know, not knowing anything, where she is, or well, what she's, she's doing. Well, she's probably fine, having a great time, feeling irresponsible for putting you through all this. We'll do what we can. I'm sure you will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gordon. Got your next feature, Mike? Uh, no, no, not yet. What does she look like? Like any other kid, Gordon. Innocent, good looking, well cared for. <laughs> you know, you'd think they'd want to go to New York or California. Why would they want to come here? Oh, well, I haven't got a clue. Why did you find out? <laughs> <laughs> Forget that Gary Spokes were coming to dinner tonight? No. Fuck. Well, come on, would you leave that? We just sat down. All right, here I come. You know, I wish you'd call. Come on. I'm sorry, Maggie. It ought to be. Here we are. <laughs> sorry, I'm late. <laughs> come on, Daddy. Hello, Pigeon. How's my first runner up doing? Good. <laughs> Mike? George has the totals for the liquor and the band and the flowers. Uh, Amy, right this minute, please. I got a terrific deal on the band. It's an old fogey band with violins. What's wrong with violins? It's a terrific band. They play at the club all the time. Do you know that you can't get a decent band for less than $600? $600? Sure, that's for four lousy hours. Yeah, musicians got to eat, too. <laughs> now, <laughs> if the people want to dance till 3 in the morning, it's another 300 bucks overtime. No problem. Comes midnight, we kick everybody out. <laughs> <laughs> Say, this is good. Are you sure you made this? Yes. <laughs> My father Danzig wants us to meet with him this Saturday. And then the following weekend, there's a rehearsal. And he wants everybody there. Do I have to be there? I'm supposed to go to the beach on Saturday. Everybody has to be there, especially you. Oh, Mom. When you go down to the beach, what do you do down there? Nothing. I mean, we swim. With whom? With my friends. What friends? Mike, try some potatoes. No, no thanks. You know, Karen, Lana, Joey. I'm supposed to go down there tonight. No. You're not going there tonight. Mike, what's got into you? I don't want you to go down there tonight, do you understand? How come? Because I say so. There's a big bonfire tonight. I don't care. I don't want you going down there and hanging around with that group. What group? What are you talking about? I went down to the beach this afternoon. I'm working on a story about runaway kids. I met a group of them. Kids from all over, no families, hanging around. And when I started talking to them, they kept saying, well, we're hanging loose, man, we're hanging loose. <laughs> we know all about those kids. They're harmless. Are they? I don't know whether they're harmless or not. Daddy. Mike, you know Annie's not like that. Oh, now the beach is a big place. It's not big enough. I don't want you to hang around with that group, especially at night. And I think you're overreacting. One of them's lying in the morgue.
Well, she's unclaimed. A girl about Annie's age. I don't think this is a subject for the dinner table. You're right. I'm really surprised at you. Excuse me, I, I'm sorry. Excuse me, too. Oh, that's not like you to get so emotionally involved in a story. I know, I know. Well, what's the matter? Well, I guess it's the wedding. Denise getting married, leaving the house. Well, that's supposed to be an occasion of joy. Let's not get depressed over well, it. Well, it's not easy. It's hard coming up with 5,000 bucks for the wedding, trying to get this thing finished. <laughs> you think that's easy, don't you? Look, <laughs> I was hoping this thing would be done so that we could invite some of the, some of the guests to come here I after know. the reception. Gary's going as fast as he can. He's a pretty good carpenter for a yeah. law student. Yeah, he's great. Just ran out of material, that's all. You know that loan we were talking about? I'm going to ask for it. Is that okay? I told you it's okay. Get your loan. Finish Thanks. your room. <laughs> <laughs> Leave your work at the office, though. Will okay, you? okay. Huh? Okay. Come on. Let's go. How's it going? Well, uh, aside from not having rented my tux yet and uh, not being able to find any black shoes to go with it. <laughs> Sounds like you got it pretty rough. Always something, Roger. Your daughter should have won that contest, Mike. No kidding. She's absolutely the best looking kid in town. Look, Roger, with the wedding coming up, I'm finding it kind of hard to come up with some cash to uh, finish that new addition of mine. Are you still working on that? Yeah, I'm still working on it. It's been a long time, hasn't it? <laughs> And I was hoping that the offer, um... This will be at a different location. You know, for the loan, if it still holds. I got a call from Engelman over the weekend. He told me to ignore any requests for financial assistance from Mike McNeil. That was a beauty of an article, Mike. A beauty. Thanks. You think it'll stop those crooks? Slow them down a bit. How much do you need? Ten thousand. Here. Fill us out, front and back. No, oh, no, 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 no. Take it home and send it in. The board meets on Friday. I guarantee they'll approve the law, okay? I appreciate that, Roger. I really do. <laughs> Good morning, Sekulovich. Mike, that runaway story was really on the nose. It came from the gut, didn't it? Yeah, pretty grim stuff. They got that ID on the kid in the morgue. She's from Battle Creek. She's been gone seven months. Here, I wrote it all up. We called her house. Her father's dead. Her mother's living in Detroit and working on the line. Her grandmother got fed up with looking for her. Nobody cared. Keep on it. I need all the help I can get. How do you program this thing for a column and a half? Voila. If we don't get this back wall framed up, the whole thing will fall down. Well, I know that. You're not telling me anything. I just don't know where I want to put the window. That's all. Hold the header up over here, will you? No, never mind. Bring it over here. Yeah, okay. I want to be able to look out of my garden when I'm working at my desk. Is, uh, is this where the desk is? Yeah. You got it. Daddy! Just joking. Yeah, yeah. McNeil. I know where you can find Cindy Hall. Who is this? Never mind that. I'm a friend, okay? Hold on, I, I have to get a pencil. Okay, uh, tell me what you know. 
You know Limestone Road off Shore Drive? I think so. It's out by the road to the Heights. Yeah, I think I know where it is. Okay, it's the cottage on the right. There's a long driveway. You can't see the house from the road. Well, whose house is it? That's where she is. She needs help. Well, how come? What's wrong? Gary, bring the car around the front. here in the winter time. I don't think there's anybody here. Hello, anybody home? Man, it looks to me like you've been had. Wouldn't be the first time. Cindy! Hey, somebody has been here. Yeah, it's a weekend place. It's lived in all right. Newspapers all over the floor. Ashes in the fireplace. Well, look, maybe they're in town shopping or something. Maybe, maybe we'd better just leave a note. You want to do that? I'm not so sure. I don't want to frighten the kid. It's better to confront them, you know. Uh, excuse me, we're trespassing here. You know that. What, are you giving me legal advice now? You saw the signs. The place is posted. Why don't you wait until you graduate from law school before you start practicing? I don't see the sign. <laughs> so what you're telling me is if I build this addition on my house, my taxes are going to go $150? That's right. There's nothing I can do about it. Uh, no, I'm sorry, there isn't. Thank you. Angleman called me day before yesterday. He's suspicious. He didn't say anything. Jess, let me assure you that nobody not even my own wife knows about this, so let's not talk about it. I want to find out the owner of a piece of property on Limestone Road. No street numbers out there. Uh, you have the lot numbers? I've got them right here. D, 82, 83, and 84. Give me a lowdown on them, will you? I'd like to know everything you can find out on that piece of property. It'll take a minute. Listen, I can't wait. My, my daughter's waiting in a car. Just call me when you find out. Daddy, I'm not gonna have any time to warm up.
Jess, what have you got? The house on map 141. Lots 82, 83, and 84 is owned outright. No liens. It's in the name of the Christopher Foundation. What the hell is the Christopher Foundation? Roger Clemens owns it. Clemens? That's right. His foundation bought the parcel about 10 years ago. They had 16 lots and sold off all but the three you gave me. Well, who's living in it now? I mean, who's renting it now? As far as I know, it's not rented. Jess, I've got to go. Uh, thanks a lot. turned off during the audition. Oh, I didn't know it was on. Daddy, please be careful with the strings. You were terrific. How could you say that? You weren't even there. Come on. Gordon. Mike? Yeah. Listen, I've got something, but it doesn't make sense. So I'd like to run that girl's picture again. Cindy Hull? Yeah. Oh, I don't know, Mike. Gordon. Gordon, please, listen to me, will you? I got a phone tip last night. Somebody tipped me off on Cindy Hull's whereabouts, so I went out there to check it out, but she wasn't there. I found out the name of the owner of the house where she's supposed to be staying, and Gordon, that's what doesn't make sense. Well, what are you talking about? Who called? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find out. That's why I want to run that girl's picture again. I want to headline it. Still missing. Maybe the caller will try again. All right. Still missing. Page one. One column. No, no, two columns. All right, two columns. Atta boy, Gordon. Mike, you wearing a formal suit? Oh, yes, he wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> oh, you'll all be so gorgeous. I don't know if I dare to show up with my gown, honey. When am I going to see your wedding dress? Oh, that is the piece de resistance. You will just die, Sal. Can I see it? Go get it, Denise. No way. Nobody's going to see it until the wedding. And that goes for you, too, Daddy. I'll get That was A2 number 7 by Sharon Silver. We now continue our program. Hello. First piano concerto please. by Joseph. Daddy, Bruce. it's for you. I don't know who it is. McNeil. Didn't you go out to the house on Limestone Road? Who is this? Look, let's stop playing games, okay? If Cindy Hull needs help, just tell me who you are and how you happen to know all this. I saw her out there. I was there. I believe you. But when I went out there, she wasn't there. So please tell me who you are. Why don't you go over and play some gin after dinner? Uh, why not? Why don't you think you should? I'm afraid. Afraid of what? We'll just run across the back. Is the back door open? Uh, just one moment, please. One second. I'll see you later, Ray. Hello, are you there? I'm still here. Um, why don't we meet somewhere? Someplace where it's dry. I, I don't know. Look, you just name the place and I'll be there in no time. You don't have to be afraid of me. If you think this girl needs help, why don't you meet me, please? There's a small gray house at 115 Crawford Drive. 115 Crawford Drive. I'll be there in 20 minutes. You're so convincing, Daddy.
Listen, Mr. McNeil, before we go any further with this, I gotta ask you to promise me something. I want you to promise that you won't use my name. Why is that? Because I just don't want it used. That's all. Now, if you've got some problem with that, then maybe we should call this off and you should go. No names. I give you my word. I'm not in the habit of revealing my sources. Word of honor. Okay. You want to take a seat? Yes. Uh, coffee? Yes, I'd like some. Okay. <clears throat> you know, I got a real good job these days. And uh, I'm engaged. I'm getting married. My oldest daughter's going to get married in three weeks. Yeah? Mm hmm Well, see, the thing is, uh, my boyfriend, Hank, he doesn't know anything about what I'm going to tell you. Nothing. And if he ever finds out, I'll lose him. I won't tell this thing ever gets out, you know, I'll lose my job. I'll lose everything. Listen, nobody's gonna find out. At least not for me. Okay? Okay. <laughs> well, <clears throat> see, I met, this, I met this guy named Roger Clements. Uh, down when I used to hang out by the beach. He sort of picked me up. I mean, I wanted to be picked up. You, you could tell right off he wasn't just some crummy. He had a lot of class. Um... I know Roger Clements. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Well, then you know. Big car, lots of money. He's good looking. And he likes girls. Young girls. I mean, real young. Like Cindy Ho? <sighs> Younger even. I mean, like... Eighteen is over the hill. Listen, young lady. You're making a lot of serious accusations. You know that, don't you? <laughs> I haven't even started yet. See, I thought he was really terrific, you know? Romantic. He had lots of dope, pills, anything I wanted. He, uh, he put me up at this, this house on the lake. On Limestone Road? Right. Boy, I lived there like a queen. You know, he used to come see me and... We had a good time. I was falling in love with him. I thought I was special. You know, at first he made me feel that way, only I didn't know I wasn't just the first girl he'd stuck away up there. You mean there were others? Oh, yeah. Lots. Anyway, he started to act crazy. You know, he wanted to take pictures of me. First, I thought it was some kind of a kick, but he wanted more, more pictures. You know the kind I'm talking about, right? Doing things, those kind. What kind of things? Oh, I don't want to get into that. You can just take my word for it. Then he got crazier. He used to beat me up because I wouldn't tell him what a big guy he was. He made it real tough on me. I mean, I liked the guy. I, I told you, I thought I loved him, but... Well, after he started to kick me around the house and everything, I decided maybe it was time to get out. And... 
And? He kept me there. He locked me in. Now, wait a minute. You sure you couldn't get out? You weren't there. You don't know. Anyway, he had all the pictures. I don't know, maybe... Maybe I wanted to stay. Then I got pregnant. See, and after that, he wouldn't come near me except just to knock me down or kick me or something. And it was too late to do anything, so I had the baby. That's his. Finally, he let me go. And he gave me some cash, you know, to take care of the kid and to keep me quiet. And then I met Hank, and I got my job, and I decided I wanted to go over to the house and tell Roger Clements to stop sending me his money because I didn't want him in my life anymore. I just wanted to get rid of him that whole part of my life, you know? So last week, I went up there, and I heard this screaming and yelling. He had another girl there. He didn't see me, but I saw him. Man, he was just punching her, and she was begging him to stop. And I saw the picture in the paper, and I knew it was her. It was Cindy Hall. You're certain of that? I saw her. I was on the front porch looking in. That guy's crazy. He's got that girl and he's not going to let her go. I take this. All right, listen to me, Julian. Julian, I don't care what sports feature you're working on, just drop it. Get your butt over to the police station and get the lead on this story. Do you understand? Okay, come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Here we go. Go back to your desk, call Gordon, and tell him the judge has just signed a search warrant. Yeah, I'm coming. Check the basement and send somebody up into the crawl space. Who gave you this information? Well, what's the difference? I believed it. I'm still not certain she wasn't here. She's not here now. It was worth a look. Captain Bruns, look at this. Barbiturates, enough to drop a horse. Or a team of horses. Captain, uh, come on over here. I think there's something you should see. Is this the Hulk kid?
about this one. My God, how many kids did he bring up here? I got seven or eight different ones here. Here's the hall girl, Captain. That's her. And here's a picture with Roger Clements in it. Sergeant. Pick up Roger Clements. Book him. Yes, sir. Armed with a search warrant, Plymouth Police launched a pre-dawn raid this morning on a hidden lake house owned by Roger Clements, the prominent... Yeah, that's right, Roger Clements, the prominent local banking executive, who every year is the master of ceremonies of the Plymouth Fall Festival beauty pageant. Here. Hey, get the captain down here. And bring some shovels. Captain, found some fresh turned dirt back in the woods. Seems to be something buried out there. Okay, dig it up. Girl, Captain. Get her out of there. That her? Is she wearing braces on her teeth? Yeah, she's got braces. Yeah, it's her. It's, it's Cindy Hall. Hi, Daddy. Hi, sweetheart. Can I take a message? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. Here. Wait, I, I'm going to finish. Never mind, you finish that later. Of work, Mike. You did a good job yourself last night, Julian. I don't know how you managed to make sense out of my dictation. You're a good writer, Julian. Even though you can't spell worth a damn. Thanks a lot, Mike. I'm glad I was here. Did Gordon assign you to the Hull family? Yeah, I'm leaving to cover it now. 
Look, your story made the wire services, both of them. Take it easy on me. Okay, I'll do that. Preliminary findings released early today by the coroner's office indicate that Cindy Hall died of a drug overdose and was severely beaten prior to her death. Mike McNeil. Oh, Mike, come on in. That sounds fine. Now tell Marsha to cut the last grab and then get her out of here onto the rest of the store. All right. Nice work, Mike. <coughs> Oh, Mike, how you feeling? Lousy. How should I feel? Well, except for the content of the story, you should be tickled pink. Oh, no, certainly is. We sold out both editions, and we're printing an additional 10,000 for tomorrow's street. I talked to Captain Bruns today. He said they've got a lot of things on Clements. Are you all set for the follow-up? I've been thinking about it. Well, let's hear it. I'd rather wait until after the hearings. It's Clemens' turn now and the DA's. Gordon. I... I'm so involved in this whole thing that... Well, I'd like to cool it for a while. I understand. But I'm going to have to sign somebody to do the follow-up. Why services are throwing a bunch of heavyweights into the picture, we're going to have to have somebody there, shoulder to shoulder. Should I send Scatterbrain down there? Julian? You want Julian down there with the heavyweights? Well, he's on the case. Okay, just tell him to consult me about everything. You tell him. Now, Mike, uh, listen to me. They're uh, going to put you on the stand. You know that. That's all I've been thinking about. Arnell's gotten four calls from the DA and Burke's really drooling. You've been named in that warrant, and, uh... And I acted on a tip. From a source. Anonymous source. Who witnessed a great deal. Now, what are you going to do? Mike? I don't know what I'm going to do, Gordon. Okay. Don't rush it, Mike. But I will have to tell Arnell just how you feel about it. He's been saying that you will do everything in your power to see that the judicial process will be unhampered. He's been saying that, really? <laughs> but I'm telling you, Mike, that we'll support you every step of the way, no matter what position you take. And I guarantee it. This is the case of the people against Roger Ward Clements. Mr. Clements, you are before this court arraigned on the charges of murder in the first degree, kidnapping, rape, felonious assault, endangering the welfare and morals of minors, unlawful imprisonment, contributing to the delinquency of minors, illegally disposing of a body, sexual abuse, possession of controlled substances, manufacturing and possession of lewd and indecent materials. How do you plead? The defendant pleads not guilty. You have a right to a preliminary hearing to determine the validity of these charges and counsel. What is your pleasure? Your Honor, this warrant is a disgrace. We move to have a preliminary hearing at this time. We have reasonable ground to believe that the charges are based on hearsay representations by a reporter who seeks publicity for himself or for his newspaper. Are the people ready to proceed? We are, Your Honor. But first, we request a brief recess. Granted. Court will reconvene 15 minutes. Mike. Listen, if that's the way they're going to fight this thing, you're going to have to take the stand and you're going to have to reveal the identity of your source, okay? They've left us no other choice. So why don't you just give me his name for the record and I'll send someone out to pick him up. I don't know. I, no, I don't know about that. I... Don't even think about it, Mike. 
We've got to have that information to make these charges stick, okay? I tell you what. If you want, I'll put you on the stand, and you can refuse it first. Then I'll ask the court to direct you to answer. Now, under orders from the judge, you'll have no choice, so that'll let you off the hook. Let me think about it. Mike, listen. Do you want this guy to get away with murder after everything he's done? I'm David Lerner, New York Herald. Well, I'm honored to meet you. I thought you were older. At least you write like you were older. I never expected a big time writer like you to be interested in a small town murder case. That's not why I'm here and you know it. I like to flatter myself in thinking I can smell a big story in the making. No big story here. Sorry. Oh, no? How about your choices? I mean, you do have to make some choices, don't you? Big choices, big stories. Mr. McNeil. You are named on this sworn affidavit as the reliable informant upon whose information the defendant's property was subsequently searched. Are you not? I am. As to these allegations made in the affidavit and given to the police, how did you happen to come by this information? I had a confidential source. It's very common in the newspaper business. I'm sure it is, sir. So you, the informant, got your information from yet another informant. Is that not so? Yes, that's right. Mr. McNeil, did you have any personal knowledge uh, independent of your confidential source as to any wrongdoing alleged in this document at the time it was sworn? No, I did not. Thank you, sir. Your Honor, the defense moves to suppress all of the evidence obtained by this search warrant and to dismiss the charges on the ground that the affidavit was insufficient to issue the warrant in the first place. Your Honor. And that the people have failed to present anything remotely resembling probable cause or legal or sufficient proof. And that the search warrant was obtained by nothing more than hearsay and innuendo supplied by an unknown confidential source. Your Honor, the people would like to examine the witness. You may. Mr. McNeil, I understand that you have promised your informant anonymity. But I want you now to weigh that promise, a promise made to an individual for whatever reasons you deem necessary. I want you to weigh that against the severity of the situation that we are now confronted with. A man is being charged with very serious crimes against children. Will you now, after some thought, please tell to the court the name of your informant. I'm sorry, I can't tell you. Your Honor, I request that the court direct the witness to answer. The court directs you to answer. Your Honor, I refuse to answer on the grounds that it would violate my constitutional rights. Pursuant to the First Amendment of the United States Constitution. Protecting the privilege, confidentiality of a newspaper man's sources of information. Mr. McNeil, 
The court has directed you to answer the question. I hope you are aware of the consequences if you should continue to refuse. Mr. McNeil. I'm sorry. Order, please. Order, please. You may step down. Bailiff, will you escort the witness to my chambers? Your Honor, the defense asks that you now consider the dismissal of all charges. Before the court entertains dismissal, the people request a continuance until such time as the witness may be brought to understand the seriousness of the situation. I believe which the he... witness understands. And so perhaps he may change his position. I will grant a five-day continuance. This court will reconvene on Tuesday next. Your Honor, the defense asks that Mr. Clemens be released without bail until Tuesday. Your Honor, please, the defendant is under charges of first-degree murder and other capital the offenses. The defendant there is... vehemently denies those charges. He has had no prior trouble with the law. He lives in the community, is a pillar of the community. In view of everything, the fact that the people are not ready to proceed, the background of the defendant, and the fact that the people have no legal charge that they can substantiate at this time. The court is inclined to release the defendant on his own recognizance. Michael, everything I know about you suggests to me that you are, well, fair and square. Now, the issue at stake here is that Roger Clements gets a fair trial. Well, we all agree to that, don't we? I mean, if he's committed any crimes, he should be made to pay for them. Well, you do believe that certain rights and privileges should be balanced against other rights and privileges, don't you, Mike? I mean, Roger Clements has rights, too. If evidence isn't given, we cannot find out whether the man's innocent or guilty. John. A reporter has to feel free to circulate through a community. He has to feel free to talk to people and to assure those people that their identities won't be disclosed. Well, no one's trying to censor you. Well, then what do you call this? You're demanding that I reveal my source. In effect, you're restraining me from collecting information. And you know as well as I do that if I can't collect it, what have I got to publish? Nothing. Well, I see you've given this matter a great deal of thought. I don't happen to agree with you on all those points, but then again, I'm a judge, not a reporter or an informant. I'm giving you until Tuesday to talk to a lawyer, talk to your newspaper, to your confidential source. And if by Tuesday you still feel the same way, I'm going to put you in jail for contempt of court. How do you feel about the prospect of going to jail? Well, I've never been behind bars, at least not as a prisoner. And knowing myself the way I do, if I can't do what I want to do when I want to do it, it's going to be a hard time for me. You can say that again. How long did you say Farber was in jail? 40 days. You take Manny's, Mr. Lerner? Oh, no, thank you. I ate at the hotel. Are you sure? Yeah. Uh-oh. Will you take it off the hook? Yeah. I'll get it. No, I have to go in anyway. Uh, do you want anything else while I'm in the house? Want some beer? Yeah, that sounds good. Some more beer. Two beers. The judge will probably give you a deadline. After it passes, he'll have to dismiss the warrant. Does that mean that Roger Clements will go free? Unfortunately, that's the way it works. And Daddy will be in jail? Oh, no. Your father will be let out then. No reason to hold him once the charges are dropped. You know, Denise said that Gary said that if the search warrant proves to be no good, then... All the evidence obtained on the original search warrant will be lost forever. You mean they can't ever punish Roger Clements for what he's done? That's right, unless the police can dig up some new evidence. Daddy, you can't let that happen. It's not fair. Mike, 
Honey, that was the bank on the phone. The loan, right? Yeah, they, they turned us down. Oh, no. Oh, Daddy, your room. But, Mike, we've got an airtight case against Clements. Let me ask you something. Are you afraid that your informant, by giving testimony, will be putting himself in danger of criminal charges? I can't say. Well, let me assure you that there will be no charges leveled. I can give you my word on that. Even if he's involved in the murder somehow. Unless, of course, he actually committed the murder. He didn't, did he? Nope, that's not the problem. Well, then what is it? Is it just that you promise? Is that all it is? What do you mean, is that all it is? I gave my word. You just gave me yours. Would you go back on it? Oh, that's different. We're not talking about the same thing. Then what are we talking about? We're talking about a criminal. That's right. And if I hadn't given my word, you wouldn't have a case against this criminal, Roger Clements. But I am trying to tell you that if you don't reveal your source, I'm not going to have a case anyway. And you have a witness to these crimes, and I need him. And you're obstructing justice. I know that. And I understand your point of view. But do you understand mine? I don't care about yours, all right? Look, why don't we just get this thing settled, huh? You can swallow some pride for a moment and then be satisfied when they slam Clement's butt in the pen. And let me tell you, because I'm familiar with that feeling, it will give you the greatest satisfaction. You know what really bugs me? I am sick and tired of hearing the press whining about being made an arm of the law when they run around like Dick Tracy trying to make idiots out of the real cops. I'll see you in court. you've been playing about seven years I started with the violin but kind of like the sound of the cello hi Ray front tire is kind of low why did you come here because I had a hunch that your father was, uh, was going to be a very special man. And I was right. You know, a lot of people have principles until it costs them something. Your dad, your dad's willing to pay a great price because he believes deeply in the need to protect the freedom of the press. That makes him special. That's why I came here. Vivaldi? Yeah. I have a look at him. I'll be kind of like him showing up at all. I'm oh, Mr. McNeil, I'm so glad you had fun. Just uh, take a seat right here. Now, look, everybody, if I could have your undivided attention for the next few minutes, I have a funeral to preside over. A funeral? Whose funeral? Oh, you didn't know her. She never came to church. And, and she only realized she was a Catholic in intensive care. And now, the only thing the uh, archers uh, have to be concerned with is whose side the guests are for. Or against. This is not a football game. No, that begins after the marriage. <laughs> Without counseling, it happens. Yes. 
Now, uh, shall we get on with the routine? Everyone here will be outside at the beginning of the service. The uh, groom and the best man will be here in the ante room to my left. Now, when you, the organ starts playing, you, uh, Sid, when the organ starts playing, you will come out and take your seats in the second row right here. The bride will be in the ante room downstairs with the maid of honor and mom and dad. As soon as you hear the organ, you will come up the stairs to the landing and then up to the foyer. Now then the bride and the daddy will appear in the doorway and begin walking slowly down the aisle. She will then be greeted by the groom, uh, Gary, here, and uh, you will say goodbye to your daddy and you will take your place by your man and I will start the ceremony and direct you from there. All right, is that clear with everybody? All right, uh, good. I have to talk with someone in my office. Uh, you just stay here and get acquainted with your seats and I'll be back in a few minutes. Uh, Mike, I'm, uh, I'm concerned about you. Are you, George? That's nice. But you don't have to be. It's really not that simple. Now, Maggie mentioned to Gloria that you might not be here next Saturday. You might be in jail. There's a good possibility of it happening, George. Mike, you don't have to go to jail. I've been over it a hundred times, and if the judge wants to put me away, that's where I'm going to be next weekend. But it's not like you're the criminal. I mean, that's crazy. That perverted son of a... I mean, he's the one who should be put away, not you. Life isn't fair, George. But you're doing it to yourself, don't you see? No, I don't see it that way at all. Well, you know, the worst part about this is not that you will be in jail, but you have the power to put him in jail. Now, I, I don't know how to say this, but what you're doing is a terrible thing. You're letting a criminal get away with murder. And I won't hesitate to tell you that I'm not the only one that sees it that way. Oh? Tell me about it. People think you're trying to uh, protect Roger Clements. What's that? Yeah, they think you have some kind of deal. Oh, what kind of baloney is that? I practically had to drag the police out there and put shovels in their hands. If it wasn't for me, they'd still be passing out speeding tickets on Michigan Avenue. And I don't care what they say. Those are the same people who, when they were shown the preamble to the Constitution, said it was the Communist Manifesto. Yeah, well, don't you see what it looks like? I mean, if you and Clements wanted to arrange something to get him off, well, this is a perfect setup. Yeah, where did you hear that? In the barbershop? No, as a matter of fact, at the club. At the club? Is that all you idiots have to do down there? Michael, you're in a church. I don't give a damn. Daddy, please. Well, did you hear what your father-in-law's trying to say about me? He says that I'm trying to help Clemens get off. Can't you people wait until after the wedding? Well, I don't know whether I'm going to be here then, Gloria, so I might as well get it over with. Listen, you... Why don't you and your friends stick to figuring out how to get your golf balls into that little tiny round hole? Michael, why are you doing this to I'm us? I'm not doing this to us. What about that wedding in there? Michael, we've got a wedding to look forward to here. Now, I've been looking forward to this wedding for 25 years. Why now? I didn't pick the time. Everything's coming apart. First it was the loan, now it's the wedding. That's just an innocent Please, child Maggie, in there. Maggie, I need you now. I need you, Maggie. You need? All right, if you need me, if you need us, then you, you stop thinking about the damn Constitution. You start thinking about us. I am thinking about us. You think about us. this family. I am thinking about then the family. Then why are you doing this? I don't know. Will you listen to me? I don't have all the answers. All I know is that I'm a newspaper man. And I've been one for 31 years, and that is all I know. You're going to lose it, Michael. I'm not going to lose it. You're going to lose it. I Michael. won't lose oh, it. Oh, Michael, don't lose I it. I won't lose it. <laughs> I'm hanging off for dear life. Will you take this paragraph? So far, so good. Take this paragraph here. The one about the pills? Put it up closer to the top because it comes much too late. Okay. 
Shut the door, Mark. Now, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I want you to get this business over with tomorrow. You understand me? So we can get back to normal around here. But what do you mean, over with? Tell Jim Burke who your source is. Let him go out and pick him up so we can get on with the trial. Who set you on to this? Who? Citizens Trust Bank, for one. They pulled out their ads for the week. So did Marshall's Lumber and Irwin Department Store. Called me up early this morning, very early in the morning. Arnell, you're the publisher of this paper. You don't have to remind me of that. I've had plenty of reminders all weekend. Mike, I want Clements to get what he deserves, as much as you do, as much as anyone in this town. I want it to happen. I want it to happen fast. You understand me? Well, you said you were behind me on this. I never said any such thing. Well, Gordon thing. did. Gordon doesn't own this paper. I do. I'm telling you right now, Mike. If you don't cooperate with the courts, I'm going to consider letting you go. I can't carry you. You don't have to consider anything. I'm going. I'm not going to believe this, Marty. The police are raiding the city room. That's right. Did you get that? Hey, this is my desk here. Hey, back off. Hey, what the hell is going on here? Uh, just shut up, Sonny, and move away from the desk. Hey, you doing? Get away from here. Sorry, we're just following orders. Let me see you. Let's see the What are you doing? That's my private drawer. If you break that, you pay for it. I'm just doing my duty. Just hold on until I get that. Stay away from the desk. Everybody get away from the desk, please. No, this is against the law. Oh, are you a lawyer? Now, which one's McNeil's desk? Runs. What do you want? Information, Mike. No, give me my All the information you've got on the Cindy Hole case, and on the runaway story, and on Clements. I've got a warrant here. It's all on the level. It's all named in the affidavit. Stand back. Come on, stand back. You have no right to touch my Are you going to tell me which desk is yours, or do we turn them all inside out? Let me out? see that. This is McNeil's desk here, Captain. Some of you officers uh, start going through the file. Now look, lady, you can be arrested for obstructing justice. Now you don't want that, do you? I should get away from that. Grace to the business, Arnold Peterson. You're selling yourself for money and you've forgotten what this is all about. And I'll tell you something else. They're not going to find what they're looking for. Superior Court of Oakland County, State of Michigan, is now in session. Judge Bohannon presiding. Mr. McNeil, I guess we can just pick up where we left off last week. You are still under oath. You are still under the judge's direction. Please tell to the court the name of your confidential source. I will not reveal my informant. Your Honor, I have no choice but to find you in contempt and to summarily remand you to the county jail until you change your mind. Oh, you don't need them, Daniel. Sorry, Mike, I have to. I respectfully request that personal bond be continued for my client, Your Honor. I have a request granted, Miss Spinner. That is my disposition of the case. Court is adjourned.
Amy, I'm going to take a beer, all right? Sure. I was rejected by the symphony. Read it. Yes, we can, uh, uh, though we found your performance well above our standard, certain circumstances. And though we found your performance well above our standards, certain circumstances extenuating beyond. I practiced for it. I really practiced for it for three years. And the board feels strongly that your participation this year should be postponed indefinitely. It's because of him, damn it. And it's because of you. Because of me what? You talked my father into it. You know, if you weren't here, my father wouldn't be in jail. Oh, not with Denise Amy. getting married and not with my symphony audition, he Amy, wouldn't. Amy, you're not being reasonable now. Reasonable? You came here and you practically made your own story happen. You just Amy, walked right Amy, in here and talked Amy, my father Amy, into Amy, it. Amy, stop it. Your father has been a good newspaperman for a long time. Do you really think he needed me to come in and tell him what to do? All I ever did was sit and take notes. Your father did it all by himself. Here, you ought to frame this. It's the exact opposite of what your dad is all about. I'm sorry about your audition. I played my first basketball game in 25 years. Don't, you better be careful. You're not in such good shape. Who won? I won. I'm winning. Take a look at this. Annie cut these out. What's all that? Encouragement. Articles about you in dissent, critical speeches, the time. Even the National Review supports you. Well, what'd you expect? They're my colleagues, aren't they? What's that? That's my story about you. Ran in the Herald yesterday. Front page? I always wanted to be on the front page of the New York Herald. Of course, I... Uh, I wanted it to be a story by me, not about me. Hey, be happy it's not your rope on page 44. <laughs> I'll leave them for you. How are the kids? <laughs> the kids send their love. They miss you, of course. We all do. Denise and Amy are going to come down later. They won't let Annie in, you know. Terrific. Mike, we're all a little bit concerned about you being in the wedding. Um, Gary wants us to talk to the judge, but Denise wants to postpone it. No. No way. You go right ahead with it. After the way I acted with George at the rehearsal, maybe it's better if I don't show up. Mike, I want you to tell me the name of the informant. No, just so I can, just so I can go and talk. Absolutely not. And don't you ever ask me again, you understand? I love you.
think we can put off on this old roofing bill. I'll just call them on Monday and tell them we'll send something in. Oh, course. no. No, no. This has been around here too long. No, we'll pay this. Let's just cut down on the credit card payments. Pay the minimum. Now, don't forget, you still have to pay interest on that, okay? It's like a loan. I'm aware of that. Checkmate. You know, I just thought for sure you'd tell me. I just know if I could talk to that person. You know, I was there when Daddy got that call. And I remember him writing down the address. Do you remember it? I remember the number. It was 115. But the street, it was Dawson, Daw, something like that. You told me that he said he'd be there in 20 minutes, and he left right away, right? Right. Okay, well, if it took him 20 minutes, it must have been somewhere on the north side. Okay, well, is there a Dawson on the north side? Uh, not that I know of. There's a, there's a Crawford. That's it. That's it. 115 Crawford Drive. I'm certain of it. Are you sure? Absolutely, I'm certain of it. I'm going. Mom, wait. Well, I'll go with can you. I, can I come? No, 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 no. no. Okay. I think everybody should stay here and I should go by myself because if this person's really touchy, one of us should go and I think it should be me. Okay, but... slow down, everybody. I think we should discuss all the possibilities first. Central. I'm moving out after the lady. My name is Maggie McNeil. I'm Michael McNeil's wife. Hello. 
Hello. Is there something we can do for you? Maybe it would be better if, if we just talk alone. If you don't mind. Beth? Uh, yeah, that's a good idea, Hank. Why don't you leave us alone for a few minutes, okay? Is everything all right? Yeah. Yes. Everything's fine. I just have something sort of personal I'd like to discuss with Bev. Yeah, why don't you come in? Yeah. You want me to take a walk? Yeah, why don't you do that and take the baby, too? He looks oh. like he could use a little fresh air. Oh, okay. Come on, Patrick. Let's take a walk, huh? You and me. You take me for a walk, and I'll take you for a walk, okay? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey, sweetheart. Put his jacket on. Okay. Yeah, you bet I was scared. When I heard about that hearing, and I heard your husband was being pressured, I thought, I thought I'd had it. I know this isn't what you want to hear, but when I read that he refused to tell about me, you don't know how relieved I was. He's a very dedicated man. I guess I've been hoping for some kind of miracle, Beverly. Something so Mike could be relieved of this awful burden. And so Roger Clements could be tried and put away. You know, the really sad thing is that... that the principal Mike is standing up for will be saved, Beverly, but in the process... He and his family will suffer, and, and the families of all those girls will suffer. And that man is just going to go on, being the same, without any kind of help, without treatment. I, he's going to be a free man. I came here today to see if you're willing to make any kind of sacrifice Look, to help... Mrs. McNeil. There are plenty of people in this world, like your husband, who are willing to make sacrifices. I am not one of those people. I don't believe that. No? Did you see Hank with my baby? Now, he's got no idea that I'm the kind of person I once was. And he's never going to find out. It would kill him. How do you know that? Do you really know how he'd react? No. But I'm not going to take a chance to find out. I'm too scared. I don't want to lose everything now. See, when I'm with Hank, somehow I feel like a respectable person, you know? Like you. You don't have much faith in that man of yours, do you? Some folks have got connections, then some folks don't. The judge ordered you released for the weekend, for the daughter's wedding. The nicest part of your getting out is your coming back. Yes. 
What time is it? Oh, I don't know. It's probably about time. Amy, what? Oh, where's Annie? Annie, sweetheart, run and tell Daddy to come down. Hi. Does that feel too tight? No. One minute, just one more minute there. Thanks. Thanks. I don't know why they're taking it out on Denise and Gary. Ta da! <laughs> we're sorry we're late. It's my fault, I drove. Oh, I'm glad you came, Gordon. Well, did you think we wouldn't? Well, nobody else did, except some of Gary's friends and family. Everybody that we invited from town didn't show. Oh, sorry, Mike. I can't believe it, Mike. You'd think they'd overlook. Come on, don't let it ruin your day. It's not gonna ruin mine. Good, Gary. Thanks, Gary. Come on, take a seat, will you? Mike? Honey, don't you think it's about time we got started? on me, Daddy. I need you to help me down the aisle. Denise, nobody came. What? <laughs> funny, Daddy. Very funny. No, it's not a joke, honey. Nobody came. And it's my fault. It's what I did. It's me. Daddy. And they're taking it out on you and Gary because of me. It's, it's what I did. And I feel so selfish. You're not selfish, Daddy. Well, so is Gary here? Of course. And his folks? And you and Mom? And my sisters? Everyone's here who counts, right? Then let's go. I'm in a hurry to get married. I'm sorry, honey. Oh, I'm, I'm really sorry. <gasps> I know I almost failed, Daddy. Careful. Careful with fail. Don't smash it. How's my mascara? It's terrific. <laughs> Will you let me have a couple of minutes? Thanks. Well, oh, okay. my gosh, look at this mess. Well, it's like nobody finished this cake. I thought it was pretty good, though, didn't you? Maybe too sweet. Mom, I'll, I'll do this. this. I don't know. I don't want to help. I don't want to help. Andy, would you just put all this stuff in the garbage, honey? Not to everything. Just... 
Well, she tore a little paper. That's too bad, too, because we could have saved some of it. But I really don't want any help. Thank you, Amy. At least, though, she got a lot of nice things she can use. At least most of them. One toaster. That's got to be a first. Or didn't she get another one? Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> well, we'll just return it. It's not as nice as that one. I guess we can return it. I don't know if that lets you return Maggie, it. Maggie, please. Please, Maggie. It's okay, I'll get it. I guess you better start getting ready, huh? Yep. <clears throat> It's not too late, is it, Mr. McNeil? I know how difficult all of this has been for you, Miss Sims. Reliving an experience that anyone would want to forget. It has been a terrible ordeal. Now. Would you please point to the individual who has caused you such suffering? That's him over there. The gentleman in the gray suit? Yeah, that's the guy. Let the record show that the witness has identified the defendant. The record will show that. No questions. 